Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this question as you can see, using one microprocessor controlled measurement scheme, one unknown resistance Rx is measured. So here as you can see, this microprocessor is interfaced with one analog circuit. So as you can see, this analog circuit consists of two resistors and one capacitor, where this R reference and the C reference are of known values while this Rx is the unknown resistance. So here, this microprocessor gives the command for the charging and discharging of the circuit and at the same time, it also measures the time which is required for charging the circuit from VL to VH. So here, we have been given that for one time, this circuit is charged from VL to VL through this R reference resistor and during that time, the charging time is equal to T reference. After that, the capacitor is discharged and now during the second time, this charging time from VL to VH is equal to Tx. And after measuring the two times, we know that this Tx is equal to K times T reference. So from this, we have been asked to find the relationship between this Rx and the R reference. So here, since the circuit consists of the charging and discharging of this RC circuit, so we should know the transient equation for the capacitor. So for the capacitor, if Vc of t is the voltage across the capacitor, then with time, it can be given by this expression. And in the earlier video of the transient analysis, we have already proved that. So in this expression, by putting the initial and the final value of the capacitor, we can find the specific time which is required by the capacitor to charge up to certain voltage level. So here, we have been given that this capacitor is charged through this R reference resistor and we have been given that it is charged from the VL to VH. So we can assume that the initial voltage across the capacitor or this VC0 is equal to VL. Now since it is charged through the supply voltage Vs, so at T is equal to infinity, the voltage across the capacitor should be equal to Vs. So we can say that this VC of infinity should be equal to Vs. So in this way, we got the initial and the final value of the capacitor. Now here, as per the question, the capacitor is charged up to the VH level. That means this Vc of t is equal to VH. And here, the time which is required to charge the capacitor up to this voltage is equal to T reference. That means in this equation, this T is equal to T reference. And this RC time constant is equal to R reference times C reference. So in this expression, if we put all these values, then we will get this expression. That means in this expression, if Vc of t is equal to Vh, then this expression is equal to Vs plus this Vl minus Vs times e to the power minus t reference divided by R reference times C reference. And let's say this is the equation number 1. So once the capacitor is charged up to this VH level, then it is discharged. And once again, it is charged using this Rx resistor. So now, during the second time, this R is equal to Rx, while this C is equal to C reference. Now once again, the capacitor is charged from the VL to VH. So we can assume that this Vc of 0 is equal to VL, and it is charged up to the VH level. That means this Vc of t is equal to Vh. But here, since it is charged using the supply voltage, so at t is equal to infinity, the voltage across the capacitor should be equal to Vs. That means here, this Vc of infinity is equal to Vs. And here, we know that the time which is required to charge the capacitor from Vl to Vh is equal to Tx. That means in this expression, if Vc of t is equal to Vh, and if we put all the initial and the final values of the capacitor, then we will get this expression. That means this Vh is equal to Vs plus this Vl minus Vs times e to the power minus Tx divided by this Rx times C reference. And this Rc time constant is equal to Rx times C reference. So let's say this is the second equation. So now if you see the first and the second equation, then the left hand side of the two equations are same. That means here, we can equate the equation number 1 and 2. 
So if we equate these two equations, then here this Vs in the two expressions will get cancelled out. So once we cancel the Vs on the both sides, then this will be the remaining expression. And once again over here, this Vl minus Vs will also get cancelled out. So after that, we will have this e to the power minus t reference divided by r reference times c reference and that is equal to e to the power minus tx divided by this rx times c reference. So now if we take the natural log on both sides then we will have minus t reference divided by r reference times c reference and that is equal to minus tx divided by this rx times c reference. So here the c reference will get cancelled out on both sides. So now if we rearrange this expression then we will have this rx is equal to this r reference times this tx divided by t reference. And here in the question we have been given that this tx is equal to k times t reference. So if we put this value in this expression then we will have this rx is equal to this r reference times this k times t reference divided by t reference. So this will get cancelled out and we will have this rx is equal to k times r reference. That means this is the relationship between the rx and the r reference. So from this we can say that for the given question this is the correct answer.